started with the business part of the day. Okay, so the first the, the, the first part of this meeting is um, about the, um, the well, what we get to the minutes. Um, we've taken a record of members present. I'm fairly sure that we have. So he'll have that, and then we can request it in the next year's minutes. We've received apologies so far uh, from Alan Alan Ballard, Marcus Wolf, Stephen Brooks, and Ian Moyes. And there may well be some more that arrive at our uh, email address during the course of today. So if you could turn your attention, you have a, a little pack, and it is a set of minutes. Um, they have been published in the, uh, uh, after last year's AGM. So all I'm asking is if, any, if anybody has any point they wish to raise from those minutes of our meeting in Manchester in 2017, shout out now. Well, I'll ask if we can accept them as a true record. Silence suggests they're a true record. And you might not have been in, in, in Manchester. We held uh, an away AGM last year in Manchester. We did manage to choose a day in which there was some uh, industrial disputes on the rail network, and we were a little challenged to get the bodies in the room. Uh, this year we're back in London. It doesn't mean we're going to stay here. We, we, we're always looking for opportunities. To be, to be on the road and visit other parts of uh, this country where we have our organisations. So I'm now going to pass to Cameron, who is going to uh, basically take some highlights from this year's annual report on the work that we've been doing over the last 12 months. Thank you, Martin. Has everybody in their pack got the Carlos Walker annual? Summary annual review. Hopefully you've all got that note, that happened. Okay, if, if, right, if, you could, if you've got other people on the table, if you could share, um, I'm just going to go through some of the points that we see in there as well. But we'll make sure that before you leave, we can give you a copy. Um, so, I joined the Swiss Rights UK last year in July, so it kind of was my first year in the role as Chief Exec. So one second. Can we raise a point of order, please? Sure. You need a formal proposal for the adoption of the money trust. Absolutely right, one sir. This is one of the same, you know, all change and... Uh, Don't and worry, so, yeah, if you're, we'll have you in order. So, one sir, uh, uh, can you um, uh, propose the, that we accept the minutes? Yeah. Is, that a propo is that a proposal? Thank you. And I guess we second this. Francis has a second in that. Um, shall all in favour? Say aye. Those against? So there we are. Resolution. Well, not resolution, it's just the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, Monza, for pointing out that. Uh, thank you. You can keep us all on track, Monza. So um, I was just saying that, so it's my kind of first year and. The first year has kind of been spent kind of really getting to know the organisation, the absolute breadth of work and the reach that the organisation has, which is incredibly 
impressive for it's a young organization and I'm sure many of you know Civility Life UK was formed through the merger of three other organizations back in 2012. So it's still on a, as a Civility Life UK is still on its early kind of journey really. There are other organizations that are you know met much, much older than, than Civility Life UK in existence. So we we we've made some immediate changes in the organization really to make us one more efficient uh, both in terms of how we operate, but also in terms of financially being um, more efficient as well. So one of the first things we did last year, um, so I joined in July, and um, by October that year, we'd um, handed in our lease uh, our, uh, notice period to the, to the building that we were in in Shoreditch in London, and found new premises in Stratford, uh, which is where we moved in um, January this year. And there's a couple of reasons for that move, really. One was we were in a building that wasn't truly accessible, which felt just not right for the national organization on for disabled people. We were also in an area where um, all the train stations weren't step-free or accessible, and so it caused challenges for people who wanted to come and see us and visit us. So we moved to Stratford in January, where, which means that we're in a much more accessible, modern space. And we've also changed the way we, we operate. So we've, we've moved to a much more kind of what we call agile working, which means that you're not, staff don't have to be at their desk from nine to five. It also means that as an organization of disabled people, we can be very flexible in how we offer um, our jobs to, to staff. So when we're recruiting, we can be very flexible about someone's ability to actually come into the office. Do they actually physically need to be there if they can work remotely? for us, and, and why not? Even to the point of our health lines that we run um, throughout the week, our staff can now actually run them from remotely from the office if need be. So we can, we can be much more agile in how we operate as a business. The move, and by moving to this way of working, also then um, benefited our bottom line in terms of the rent that we were paying, because we're using less space, um, with staff working remotely, it's meant that we can spend more of that money that we're saving on rent into the services that we want to provide and the things we actually want to do that, that support disabled people. So that, that was one of the changes we made straight away. Since then we've also started to think about um, the redoing, refreshing our strategy and business plan. The strategy document and the business plan effectively came to, or come to an end in March 19. And so this year, and this AGM is the start of the process of refreshing uh, our strategy moving forward for the next three to five years as well as the business plan. So the session that we've just done, the small start around campaigning, will feed into that and we'll be doing more interaction with members um, and our partners to, to, as we get further down the line. So it's been a, a year of, of some change and we've also had, I'd also like to thank all of our staff team who, who managed considerable change in the year um, and our volunteers and remembering that our volunteers who actually helped to provide some of our activities and services but also the whole board of trustees every trustee is also a volunteer within the organization so a huge thanks for myself to the whole team um, so our staff and volunteers i'd also like to just recognize some people who left the organization after many years so martin's also already mentioned mary uh, congo who left um, earlier this, this in the summer, and Mary has been with the organisation since since it's, it started, and she um, was very supportive when I joined as my executive assistant. So we wish her well. Um, Jason Jasper, who was our commercial business development manager, also left us uh, last month, and um, again we wish Jason well in his future endeavours and thank him for the work that he did with us in terms of setting up our commercial activity. Um, also, Kate Perudas, who was who managed our Get Out and Get Active uh, program, has moved on earlier in the year, and we have now recruited to that post. So again, we wish Kate well and thank her for the considerable work that she did to get that project going quite quickly when she joined the organisation. And um, Sarah is the person who's replaced um, uh, Kate. I don't think Sarah's here today. Uh, oh, she is. She's at the back. Hi Sarah. Um, so Sarah's taken over from Kate. That's it. 
Okay, so so, so considerable change, and we are now in the phase of recruiting to replace our business development post, and we just appointed this week, and so we'll be making that announcement in due course. In terms of things that the organisation has been doing in the year, um, those of you who've got the uh, summary document, you can uh, follow this along. So in terms of our independent li living criteria and strategy section, in terms of our research, we awarded 1.5 million pounds to 10 projects across the UK through our disability research on independent living and learning, the drill project. Um, this is a project that Solicity Rights UK uh, manages in partnership with our colleagues in Inclusion Scotland, Disability Wales, <coughs> Disability Action, and Northern Ireland. These 10 projects were selected from over 95 applications that were received and cover areas such as participating in the economy, uh, participating in community life, and participating in civic, civic and public life. Um, moving on to our uh, kind of Get Out Get Active program, the peer support project was, was developed in volunteers and a guide, volunteers guide called Volunteering Matters. And we created a guide to engaging disabled people in improving the sports sector and understanding of how to engage and involve disabled people in designing and co producing activities. Um, our Get Out Get Yourself Active program, which is our sports activity, active activity program. Continues to have two local coordinators situated in the Cheshire Centre for Independent Living and Leicestershire Centre for Independent Living, as well as uh, continuing to work with Peterborough, Preston, Sheffield, and Doncaster. Just moving on quickly to, um, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of this. Moving on to some of our work around policy. So we Continue to be part of the Health and Wellbeing Alliance, working with NHS England, Department of Health, Social Care and Public Health England. So as part of that in the year, we coordinated the user-led, what's called the Win-Win Alliance um, of Disabled People and uh, Leading Change. The Win-Win Alliance is a consortium which includes us, Disability Rights UK, Shaping Our Lives, Change, and the National Survivor and User Network. In August last year, we represented um, and went with a number of other organisations representing disabled people. We attended the, in, uh, the session in Geneva of the UN Committee, considering the UK's implementation of the Convention on the Rights of Disabled People, UNCRPD. And I'm sure many of you here have seen those reports, both the shadow report that we sent and the UN Committee's um, quite damning report of the performance of government in terms of UNCRPD. We continue to um, be part of the coalition that went to Geneva and continue to be part of that group to monitor the implementation of the UNCRPD uh, in the UK. We uh, continue to promote our manifesto on, the, um, on what the disability rights sector should be seeking from post-EU-UK, so post-Brexit. What is it that we want? Um, so irrespective of which way disabled people voted and which any of us voted, whatever happens, post-Brexit, what is it that we want to ensure um, happens for that, that benefits and protects us as disabled people and our rights? Okay. So the other area that we work on is, is responding to consultations. So the government in the year puts out many consultations that, that we respond to, and so we've contributed to a number of those throughout the year, which included the reform of the Mental Health Act, the Blue Bag Scheme, and inclusive transfer proposals. We've also given evidence to a number of parliamentary inquiries, including the Work and Pensions Committee inquiry on personal independent payment, Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, and Department for Work and Pensions consultation on supported housing, the Work and Pensions Committee's uh, PIP and Employment Support Allowance Assessment Inquiries. In terms of our information that we provide, so the Right to Participate website that you um, heard about this morning and seen some aspects of it uh, was developed in the year and has formally been launched today, funded by the Legal Education Foundation. 
I did some Lindsay Wright's handbook, which if anybody would like to buy a copy, are on sale here today. Steve is outside the, the door. Um, he's very lonely, so if you do want to go and say hi to him and buy a copy or pick up one of our publications, please do. But in the year, we sold over 12,500 of those books, which are used by advisors and individual claimants alike. And it's, it's an invaluable resource that continues to provide guidance um, at a time when it's ever more challenging for disabled people in those long-term health conditions. And just finally, briefly, uh, careers and opportunities, getting work, education and skills. In response to the government's new careers strategy, launched, which was launched in April 2017, a disability skills unit produced a briefing paper titled Careers, Guidance and Advice for Disabled Young People, which you can find on our website. We've submitted a response to the Taylor Review of Employment Practices in the Modern Economy. The submission focused on two of the stated areas of interest. Firstly, how we can harness modern business practices to resolve the underrepresentation of disabled people in the labour market. And secondly, the contribution of this of new and diverse business models. We've often heard about the gig economy and um, the idea of zero hour contracts. Um, the, fun, the, the kind of we concluded our first phase of the I can make it campaign um, earlier in the year with a pledge of that was held at the Financial Times uh, building in London. The aim of the event was to encourage local authorities and businesses to pledge um, jobs for young disabled people, primarily primarily through the use of the Social Value Act, and to encourage more political support for that campaign. And we continue to build on the work. Um, from the first year of our Disability Skills Unit, uh, dedicated to supporting disabled people to pursue their goals, ambitions, and aspirations in work, education, and skills development. And just finally, our Leadership Academy uh, has continued into its fourth year. We had 11 delegates who went through the Leadership Academy program. Each delegate on that program is paired up with a mentor who donates their time uh, to help the mentees prepare for the four days of training that are spread over a year. With the purpose being really for disabled people who are in work to make that step change, to progress their career or to make a significant shift in what it is they want from their career. And working with individuals through peer mentoring on the program to really harness kind of what are the unique skills and abilities of disabled people and what we bring to the workplace and what they bring. I'm going to stop there and open the floor just if there's any questions that people have about either anything I've said or any of our other work. Okay, we've got one question at the front, which I might to you.
to which the UN Disability Committee report tends to be bring up there. Um, now, I don't welcome most of what Donald Trump does, but it is an opportunity to try and reshape how that works to make it more accountable to us. Um, part of the criticisms of the Labour government has been to focus on Israel and not much else. Um, and so, but it should be something that we can focus on also when the things have been reported to the UN Security Committee. But I would think of somewhat as a remit or as a problem with what they have done themselves or not done themselves. Um, so I, I would ask you to, to follow that, take it up with alliance with your various partners uh, around the world to ensure that we can use this opportunity to get some reforms and make it more accountable and disabled people. Thank you, Adrian. We, we have taken notes of what you just said. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, is there, is there a colleague in the room who could offer some information on that? Yeah, Sue? Um, well, we're, um, uh, we're, we're quite blessed in, uh, in our UK and, and our staff are having some real experts on uh, PIP and, and ESO and how they all. Um, and in fact, I have to say that. Um, you know, sometimes they are successful in pulling the WP up um, uh, and telling them when um, the things are outside the regulation um, that, that, that they're, they're doing. Um, we do an awful lot of work on, uh, on PIP and uh, ESA, and uh, Martin will tell you that on our website, it's probably the, not surprisingly, um, the, most, uh, the most popular areas. So we do seek evidence. We, we, um, we've used a number of opportunities in the past year to, to submit um, evidence, particularly to the, the, um, the DWP uh, Parliamentary Select uh, Committee, um, uh, presenting evidence on, on things like uh, 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 sanctions and, and how they don't work. Um, you are absolutely correct in saying that the situation with ESO and um, PIP is just getting worse and worse. Um, we're always pointing that out, um, as is the select committee itself, um, I'm afraid, and uh, um, it's just hard to know um, what it is that, that the government will listen to, but um, uh, I can assure you that um, uh, our our staff are doing whatever they can um, at the opportunity. Just, just to add to that, if, if you would like to see some of our submissions, we can certainly send you the links if you let us know your email address. And if you're a member, great, we will have it. But um, we can actually send you the links to the contents of what we submitted, which is all on our website. And you can search for it on our website as well. But we're very happy to, to send you the links. Any other? Yeah. Just one more, yeah.
get more people involved in the media, then you might actually start to influence this stuff by a contributory perspective. Right. On, on the first point, absolutely yes, I can, I can put it on record and I can go on record to say the, um, certainly I'm not interested in any contracts that we may end up having that would restrict our ability to be critical of the government and we would continue to do so. And so, one, we would never sign anything like that and secondly, we don't have any contracts currently that even that's stipulate anything like that at all. Um, so I hope that gives you that reassurance and you can hold us to account on that, absolutely. On the second point of media representation, yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, Mick, you're going to hear from any minute uh, after the AGM, we will hear from him and his experiences. But absolutely, it's, um, we, we talked about campaigns this morning, and certainly that's another area that we, we can look at uh, to campaign on and, and raise them aware. And working with people like yourself and Mick is, is important to enable us to do that. Thank, thank you. For, uh, no more questions for Cameron at this point. He, we, we're around all the day, so if you wanted to talk to us about anything, um, please feel free to ask the questions. Um, we now turn to Dry Paul Bromwich, who is going to. Really? Yes. Okay. Okay, so. Who would like to propose? that we accept the uh, CEO's annual report. Uh, Monza is, has shouted out. And then a seconder, I see at the back there. Hello and welcome to you. I've seen you for a while. So that's a, a, a proposal and a seconder. Paul is in favour, say aye. Those games. There you go. Thank you very much. Now I would like to pass to Michael Bobbich our treasurer, and he will try and take us through the highlights of our numbers without completely baffling everybody. Good afternoon. Um, normally, accountants try to hide things in their numbers. Uh, we try not to do that. And the summary of the financial results is very clear. Basically, each year we have our account audited. Oh, you want to close Right, good afternoon. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yes. Uh, the accounts for the last financial year in the 31st of March have um, been audited by Paul Wynn. They are a new auditor. Best practices to change an auditor fairly often. The figures are really just otherwise you you could have been living in for 25 years and we all kinds of mutual advantage. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the auditor the accounts that we gave to the auditor this year, like all the other years, has no had no changes made by you. That's really Could I raise a point of order, please? Do we have a copy of these financial statements? Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry, yeah, they, uh, they were emailed to you. They were. Okay. So there's, not, there's none provided here in this meeting. Do go to the 
first part of the account, which was that talk to Laporte, and that has a vast amount of detail about the scholarship. Um, and it really does give you a very good idea of what the um, organization is doing. The nice thing is that financial highlights show that we have something called a positive movement fund. All that means is we are not uh, making a loss, we are actually making a surplus, it's not a loss. Um, I'll, I'll say this again because just in case any of you are thinking of data from the Very deserved. Yeah. I mean, we've even had donations, so you've got to Our money comes from all things. This is the question. Our money comes from all sorts of sources. Uh, at one stage, we had a very large amount of government grants. The problem with government grants is you can never be sure that they're continuance. continuance. Uh, and basically what we've done is much more try and do activities where we generate money ourselves to make us, as far as possible, uh, self-sufficient. That, that is really what we're doing. Uh, we also uh, run uh, projects for people, mainly not government, and they give us quite a lot of income. But basically, they are our sources of income. Is that, is that the question? I think what he was referring to, you raised a problem last year regarding the pension liability. Yeah. Now, you, you managed to get that liability taken over, yeah. uh, and that has released a lot of yeah. funds with it, so you're now sharing the profits. That's basically what he means. Yeah. So it's, it's, they've got rid of the liability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
fine. You're happy. You're happy then. But basically, uh, the pension scheme, which I think of not a vast amount of time, but sometime on last year, uh, is going very well. And hopefully, we'll pay off any money we owe for this year in 2000, 2003 months. Uh, and if anybody wants to help us on that, we'll be denied. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I may then, I would wish I would ask you, uh, if you're willing to, uh, move the accounts. Uh, all those in favour? Vote, please. <coughs> oh, sorry, I want to vote for you. I want to vote for a second, don't I? Vote for both buttons, seconded by Mr. David, and the current Lucinda Buxton. Sorry, all those in favour, I'm sorry about this. Yeah. Of accepting the accounts. Yeah, fine. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, yes, thank you, Michael. I'm not sure whether laughing through financial presentations is always a wise move, but it certainly makes it possibly easier to understand. Um, there's, uh, there's something actually Michael didn't mention that I'm going to mention, and it's actually before we come to the auditors. We did. Um, we did an audit scoping exercise, uh, just part of our good governance, uh, and we don't we're not always tied to the same independent audit. And so this time we had a, a, a new set of auditors looking at our books for the first time, and it was really pleasing to sit inside the uh, the room with the, with the financial with the auditors, and for them to comment that the the books were impeccable, that the the way in which the records have been kept and the financial management was first class. And I think when you reflect some of the financial impropriety that's been going on in our sector, I think that's particularly pleasing, and ever more so because it's a new set of auditors that we've not dealt with before. And so I, I as chair, would like to, and I'm sure Michael echoes this as well, I would like to, to uh, say my thanks and have it recorded that uh, the work that's done by the, the, the financial team and then but that's, that's, that's really first class, and not when you continue to do that accurate work for us. <laughs> so this might sound like a bit that I'm plugging these auditors, but the next part of our official business is we have to, I actually have to ask for your approval that we continue to use these auditors for the next financial year. Now we will, um, as part of our governance system, we will review our auditors on a regular basis. And while this is the stepping stone, we will make that call between sort of three and five years generally. And after that point in time, it is often prudent to look around and see if other auditors could come in, give us a better price, and also from a point of not having a long-standing and continued relationship with the same financial body. With that in mind, this is only their second year, uh, and they, uh, we were pleased with them as well. They found the audit process helpful and useful, and so I, think, yeah, I therefore would like to um, propose, and I'm, I'm again, do I have to have a proposal and a seconder for this, or is it because it comes from a committee? Does it just need a seconder? Probably we'll do a proposal and a seconder. Well, we'll bell and brace us. So it's, um, and I get the name right, Goldwins. Um, we would like to engage them for the following 12 months to continue with the audit process. So we'll hear a proposer. Push, thank you. And seconded. Somebody at the back there. Lucy's waving, so that's great. Thank you. Um, all those in favour? Those against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay, we now turn to the one matter of adjusting our articles. Now, if you're not um, completely sure what I'm talking about here, we governed by a set of articles of association uh, that are registered with the Charity Commission. 
and they set down the framework by which we operate, and that effectively are our rule book. Uh, and we supplement those with our charity protocol. But it's the ones on um, the articles that I'd like to turn to. And we have a proposal um, following our meeting last year in Manchester, and because we were beset by a trade strike, it, it became apparent that actually engaging with our members when these things happen can be quite difficult. And when you look at our, um, our articles, they weren't particularly welcoming in terms of being able to cast a proxy vote and allow a chair or another person in the room to cast your vote for you. So we went away and we've looked at our articles and we're proposing to change 9.1 and 9.3. Now 9.1, and I'll read this out, currently reads, members are entitled to attend a general meeting in person or in the case of organisations through their authorised representatives. The board would like to change that by adding members who are unable to attend a general meeting may instruct another member who is attending or the chair to act as their proxy. In such circumstances, the member would instruct their proxy of their vote or discretion to act on their behalf. Proxy votes will count towards the quorum. And then in 9.3, um, the, the whole piece reads, there is a quorum at a general meeting if a number of members or their authorised representatives, as applicable, be present at such meetings, is at least a lower of 25 members and 10% on the number of members rounded up to the nearest whole num number entitled to attend the event at such meetings. We just need to like to insert either in person or by proxy into that. We do have it written down on the, uh, on the piece of paper that we've got. I'm open to questions. It is, um, as far as I, uh, I'm certain, certain this is a piece of administrative um, um, changes to the articles. It changes nothing really in the way of engagement, and in fact, it actually opens up engagement to a wider digital audience if they're unable to travel and are unable to make this meeting in person. So before I, I ask to move this motion, um, could I ask, has anybody got any questions they need to ask about this? Um, Jude. Check something. Were there rough changes? Um, were, was there approval of rough changes um, at the AGM? That's that they're the rules. Has that been done? Have we checked that there's been sort of a rough draft, if you like, done first of all? Yeah, these changes were sent to members before we put it to the before we put it for an actual vote. Is that what you mean? I think those rules have changed now. Um, there needs to be a, they have to be copied in first. And the Charity Commission um, needs to be copied in first. That has to be done first. If there's a proposed change, then it needs to be here. It needs to be go to the Charity Commission first. They're, they're the rules. Right. Let's just take another question, we'll think about it. <coughs> um, unless it actually says so in the uh, um, memorandum and article, then that's not actually the case because what they do require is if you're changing the object, then you have to get the uh, permission. That's not what's being asked for here. Right, so that, that comment is about the charitable objectives which we are not changing, which I know we absolutely have to have a uh, charity commission authority to change <coughs> charitable objectives. This is a procedural point within the, within our overall articles. Um, do, we have, do we have another point on this? Over? I saw another hand over on the far right. Hi there, Julian Ricoeur, West London, Epilepsy and Diabetes. Great meeting, my first proper meeting here, and thanks for having me. Uh, I would say that one thing you can do on this is exactly what I'm doing at the moment. I'll offer as a free service to you guys, which is called online streaming, which means all your members who can't make it 
Well, they can still watch and they can still learn because what you have is interaction. If you say to someone else, you guys are pretty, it's interesting. Um, so uh, along with your proxies, you can have remote viewers. That sounds like an incredibly uh, good offer and uh, I'm sure Cameron will be uh, talking to you about that. Um, yeah, I'll be right there now. Yeah. <laughs> We have been toying with the whole idea of digital connections and streaming, and I think we are. We've been putting this out on Facebook, is it? No, it's not. Um, no, the PDR. Periscope. It's on a Periscope, not Twitter. Um, but so it is being streamed at the moment, but obviously, be happy to talk to you, Julie, about, about kind of a more professional approach. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going a little bit further, I'm afraid. What I've developed is a system whereby somebody in the comment section of the video, as they're watching, uh, poses a question, it would pop up on the screen behind you immediately. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I'd be very happy to talk to you about that before you go to me. Thank you. Um, yes, it, it certainly helps to stream things. However, there are uh, things like digital black spots. There are also um, some people, because of the nature of their antennas, that you know, the internet essentially won't work for them. So that still needs to be kind of backed up by um, other methods of kind of text or email um, faxes and what, what have you. Okay. Um, and then if we just take the final point on this, uh, Mons of Why? So we, this is the whole area we're looking at in terms of digital engagement and how we put out the screen, etc. So it's not a, we, we recognise that's a platform we could use. Uh, we just have to understand how we can do that and it's connecting with other people um, that are going to help us on this will be really useful. Right, what I'm going to do is, is I'm planning to um, take a vote on this anyway. Uh, this can stand as indicative at this point in time. We will check out uh, on David's point whether we actually do or don't have to formally notify them. Um, you think it's all right? So we don't, don't need to mind that the world really needs to work for us. All I'm saying, I mean, carry on with the vote, absolutely. But be prepared that there'll be an, an EGM. Call EGM. Right, it can, can get on, but we can carry on. So, yeah, thank you. So, what I'll do is I will take the vote. Um, it can stand if when we check this out and there isn't an issue. If there's a problem, then we'll come back to you uh, and then convene something on that score, like we spoke about in EGM. Okay, so, um, just first question Do we have orga any organisational members in the room? Just because they have a different voting number? Just so if I just identify so just with one. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, two. Um, ben, because we're going to do a vote tonight, because I, we, could have, we should have done this track by paper, it might have been easier. But if we, we're going to have to pay on cameras for this. So Ben, are you just aware that there's two organisations? Just check which they are, because it's whether it's five or ten in terms of numbers. Okay, then, uh, so if you just, can you just name show? Unison. And you said? One place east. You get that, guys? One place east. Okay, so when we, we show our hands, obviously they'll, they'll expect what you do, that you have voting or not voting, as the case may be. So, proposal that this motion to change uh, a small part of our articles. Mons has proposed it, seconded by Lucy again, thank you very much. So all those in favour of changing the articles as uh, written down on the uh, notification page you've had, raise your hands, say yes. Do we have a show of hands please? Ben, could you keep them up so that um, Ben can scurry around quickly and get everything? <laughs> Okay, is that good? You got that? Yeah, Any against this uh, change to articles? 
Any abstentions? Thank you. This is going to be a little easier because we did a, we've done a paper vote on this, um, so it's also a great secret, which is also extremely helpful. Um, each year, we have a number of trustees that either reach the end of their career, stand down for whatever reason, uh, and each year we, we enter into a cycle of um, seeking new trustees, interviewing, and eventually getting to the point where we can put a, a slate of um, potential trustees for you to vote on. This year we have um, five candidates seeking, we have four spaces on the board. Um, we've had those, um, we've, we've, we've sent everybody the pen portraits and the, and the um, voting form. We took all the voting forms in early, so we don't need to do show of hands. So I can announce, because I've already got them, the, the results of that election. And so for the next 12, oh, so starting a new three year term, I'd like to welcome back Francis Hassler and Rob DeBerry, and then new members of our board are Atik Chowdhury and Madeline Close, who will join us for the first time. So, uh, oh, thank you very much. Then also, is, as, as is um, uh, within our articles of association and our charity protocol, the board, um, while I um, am asking to be their chair for the forthcoming year and to continue my term, because of our membership organisation status, I then have to ask the membership at large if they are happy with that board decision to, for me to continue as chair. And I've not sat any with a sad face. I'm quite pleased to report that they have come back with an affirmative and that I can continue for another year. And so I thank you all for that and putting trust in me to help Cameron deliver our mission of equality for all. So thank you. As regards trustees, I have one other um, um, thing to, that I have to mention about uh, our trustees. Is we have a very eminent uh, emeritus professor here who, who doubles and baffles us all with his uh, acumen and skill at uh, the financial numbers. Um, he pays me really well. No, I mean, not, 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 not for him here. I, I've met a number of treasurers in my time, and Michael is, is he's up there with the top echelon of treasurers. Um, he's, he's currently on, uh, we just keep reappointing him each year because he's the best, uh, and we've continued to do so. I mean, ultimately there's going to come a time when he's going to tell us to stop because he really wants to retire and go to New Zealand or wherever he comes is wandering off to, we always seem to be in the South of France anyway. But apart from that, uh, we have appointed him again for another 12 months as our treasurer. Uh, and that was, a board, that was a board decision and that doesn't need any uh, ratification by our membership. I uh, just wanted to point that out that, uh, that Michael will stand again. And thank him as well, he's, he's, a, he's a good, right hand financial man to have. So, thank you very much. Where's the fee? <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's about as much as we can afford. Right, thank you. We got through the, the business. Actually, just, just one more piece. I'll, do, I'll say this now, actually, because um, I've, got, I've got to sum up at the end, but uh, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about our challenging year, but can we do that? And how we've uh, done some office change, and we did that, and uh, talk about the, uh, the, the staff settling into their new working environment, uh, which they have done really well. Um, and he was also, he's also said farewell to a number of staff that have helped us out. And have you, have you noticed that Mary's not here this time because our, our fluid AGM has been slightly more out of procedure, but I'm sure we've got there and we've got there <laughs> um, at this time, because we've had trustee elections and because of the numbers, we've had two trustees that have reached in their turn. So I would like to thank two of our trustees that have, that are, have reached in their turn and have now stood down. They have both demonstrated a really good skills at questioning and probing the work of the IUK. And I've, I've been privileged to work with these two, and they, they keep me on my toes, they keep us all on our toes. And they have done really good work on a voluntary basis for this charity. So I'd like to, to formally recognise that 
Bush Kenobi is, is standing there and thank him for all the work that he's done for the OK. He is in the room somewhere, I think. So thank you, Kush. <laughs> and, and Sophie, who's, who's not in the room today, she's, um, she's from up in my part of the, the country, from Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, and she's, um, she stepped down at this point in time, and I wish her well for the future. And I guess with, with both of these uh, ex-trustees, we haven't heard the last of them. And I'm sure if we do embark on some form of campaign or shout about parking at the NHS, then I, I guess Kush would be badging this one as his. So we will, we'll, I'm sure we're going to not see the end of them, and I thank you both for the work. But so for Sophie as well, if you just round the for Sophie. <laughs> time if I come to the end of, uh, of that piece. So thank you very much for the formal part of the proceedings. Well, I'm now going to pass back to Cameron, who will take us into the, uh, I know I enjoy the tea, so it's a uh, tea break, isn't it? So we're going to have a, a short break, and if I check my notes, we are back at 2.50.